This is the rear diff on my 1982 GMC 1-ton. It's a uh, 14 bolt full floater. When I pulled it off, uh, pulled the cover off the other day to change the fluid, um, this is a brand new vehicle for me, uh, I discovered some bearings, some bearing parts sitting down here in the bottom uh, on that magnet. Um, that was pretty scary. What I discovered was um, the pilot bearing, or also called the straddle bearing, that fits on the tip of the pinion. It's way back up in here. That's the, actually the tip of the pinion. Um, I've already removed the damage uh, bearing uh, outside, um, but all that, all those bearing rollers were gone, uh, just leaving the race, and they they fell down in here, down in the bottom, and attached this magnet. So, I'm going to be replacing that bearing right now. In order to get the pinion out, you need to remove the drive shaft. This is the front of the drive shaft on my truck. Uh, just make sure that you mark the shaft and on the truck side so that you can get it aligned exactly the same. Um, that'll help you get, not get uh, vibration when you put it back together. This is the other side of the drive shaft, uh, the pinion side. Uh, same thing here, just mark it so you get it back in the same spot, rotation wise. Um, and then remove the, the four bolts on the retainers, and uh, then you should be able to slide it forward and get the drive shaft out. It's pretty straightforward. After you get the drive shaft off, this is what, what it looks like. Um, don't mess with the center pinion nut. Um, for our purposes, we don't want to take that off and mess with all the, the shim set up and everything like that. Uh, we just remove the six six carrier bolts around. Um, make sure you mark mark it with a marker or a punch so that you know which direction to get it back in. Uh, there are also uh, either shims or a shim probably. Here, here's one on mine. Uh, it's very important to to get that back in there when you put it back together. Um, don't bend it up. Make sure everything's clean. Here's the pinion and pinion carrier. Um, you can see the, the bearing, the main bearings are in there. Um, the tip of the pinion is where the, the uh, failed bearing goes. Um, here's the new, new bearing. It slips on there pretty easily. Um, you do install it in the, in the rear end first before uh, before putting it, before putting the pinion in. Here's a shot with the uh, pinion and carrier removed. Um, I've also already taken out the bearing, the old bearing race. Uh, you can see at the nine o'clock, and it's hard to see, but also the three o'clock position. There's some cutouts, and that helps you bang out that old race. Um, it's a little difficult, but I did this with a axle still in the truck. It wasn't wasn't terrible, but uh, it takes a little bit of time. Used a um, a uh, extension socket extension to get back there and knock those out. Here's the uh, pinion side. Uh, again, I've got the old race already taken out, but uh, you can see see what it looks like with no bearing. The new pilot bearing does install and come out through the pinion side of the rear end. Here's what the new pilot bearing looks like after it's installed. Um, when you pound it in, make sure and use something that, that drives it from the outer race. You don't want to be pounded on the, the rollers. And make sure you get it seated all the way. This is what it should look like after you get it all back together. Brand new bearing in there to support the front of the pinion.